So like most agents that come in, they're scared about like talking to clients and advising them on stuff and talking about the process that they don't really know a whole lot about yet because they're so new. They give me the appropriate training, you know, how to make phone calls, how to get approached, you know, how to talk to the agents, you know, how to talk to the buyers, you know, how to schedule, you know, um, how to read inspection reports. The amount of people that watch my content that don't comment, that love me, love my content, um, far, 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 far outweighs the haters. Like, how do you take time out of your day, you know, to like type something mean on a on a, on a video or even call somebody and say something mean to them? Like, how how do you have the time of the day to like put forth effort to be mean to somebody? That that sounds something really weird about you. Yo, bro, how's it going, Ricky? How are you, man? Okay, okay. Uh, you working at you working at your house or or, or like an office? I'm in the office right now. I come in every day. I come in every day to the office. I not can work from home. I not. You can't work at home? No, I know. I get distracting at home most of the time. Here in the office, I get, you know, get my laptop, you know, go to my shrine, look at my stuff, make my phone calls, you know. Yeah. You get distracting most of the time. For yeah. Me. Yeah, dude, for the first, <clears throat> honestly, till COVID. Till COVID hit, I had to go to the office. I went to the office every day, like it was a job, went in, made my calls, did all my stuff. And then when COVID hit, you know, we we're kind of forced to work at home. And then I just never went back. I was like, you know, of course, I have I have kind of a nicer home since uh since I started in real estate. So I kind of have I got my own office and stuff. So bro, oh, that is nice. Yeah. Um Let's dive in here, man. I want to give everybody a little context, like, you know, a little bit of the background. You know, you you came over on a K-1 visa. <clears throat> you were part of the reality yeah. show. Part of the reality yeah. show. Beyonce. And um, now you're a real estate agent in Atlanta um, who did 40 deals in a second year. So I'm just super interested, man, in this the, the way this whole thing kind of played out. So, um... I guess, man, like, well, number one, like we're, me and my wife, we watch every single episode. So we know all when it comes to that. And then, um, you know, anybody that wants to see that, go, go watch that. But then I guess what I'm more interested in is like, at what point did you decide that you wanted to become a real estate agent? Like, how did this whole thing kind of come to be? And how long were you in the States before you actually decided, you know, you wanted to pursue real estate? Yeah. The first time they got to pursue real estate was the time that I buy my first house. Yes. And the time that I bought my first house, my realtor told me, you know, like, you nice, you know, you had a chemistry with the people. I believe that, you know, that you can, you can be great. Yeah. They say, I know this so. I never been to sell, you know, I was working out in a warehouse most of the time in the freezer. That was my job, you know, the seven, seven in the morning. To seven and nine, two, two hours a day shift, you know, and then after that, she say like, Rebecca, yeah, Rebecca told me like, you can be real estate agent, yeah, you can do this job, you know. I say, ah, my English is a little bit bad. I believe, you know, I can, I can work with, you know, most of the American people, you know, most English English people because my English is super bad. I say, no, you can work with Spanish people. They buy a lot of houses too. I say, okay, let me try. <laughs> So how long ago was that, that you, that you first thought, like, or you say when you bought your first house, that's when you thought about it. Yeah. Your, your agent was like, you should become a realtor. What, is this the agent that you work for now? No, 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 no. I'll be different yet. Okay. Okay. So, so your agent at the time was just like, you'd make a great agent. You should become a real estate agent. Then you started thinking yeah. about it. And then, um, how hard was like the tests and taking the class and all that stuff for you? Oh, for me, it was super hard, super yeah. hard. Because first thing was, you know, you know, the English part, you know, the language speaking, you know, mm -hmm. most, most of the people, I remember my first day, you know, most of the people around me, you know, the class, we won like 40, 40, 40 people in the class, 40 people. 
most of them was, you know, uh, English speaker. And most of the time, they make a fun of me. Anytime they raise my hand, you know, and asking questions to the teacher, they say, oh, my God, your English is, is bad. You know, your English is <laughs> suck, man. <laughs> you know, that's it that way. Even my teacher, you know, make a fun of me most of the time and say, oh, my God, uh, you have to, if you have to take a class, first you have to learn how to speak English. After that, you can become a realtor. Man, that was very hard for me. That was super hard for me because most of the time, anytime that I asking Danny asking a question for my teacher, you know, she say you have to learn how to speak English, you know, if you want to move a out because your English is like it's, it's super bad. Mm -hmm. You can understand anything, and the, everybody make a fun of me. That was really hard for me, you know. Super hard. I feel, yeah, you know, give up, you know. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I continue, you know, I continue to read, read the book. I take class. My class was like the 7 to 4 o'clock. After 4 o'clock, I was to the Starboard nearby and jump in the book and read and read and read and read. And I stop. I not stop. Even the end, man, they make a fun of me all the time. Were they like, were they like being like, um, were they like laughing with you kind of, or was it more like being mean? No, it was more being mean. It was more yeah. being a little mean with me. Wow. Yeah, I was more and like your mean. teacher told you that you, you needed to go learn English before you could be, your teacher said you wouldn't, you, you weren't going to become it. Like there's no need in even trying to become an agent. Your teacher said that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that didn't come out. You had to learn English properly, English. Oh my God! To become a Rialto, you know, and then oh my God, what's hard for me? What? Oh no, super hard. People, people understand whether you want to get, you know, be something better. It's uh, it's people put you know wall in front of you, to you know, for you know cross over, and that teacher, I mean, remember. Every time they asking that I try to raise my hands, she even look up. She just ignored the fact you raised your hand and picked somebody else. Yeah. Bro, that's like, damn, I can't even like imagine that kind of scenario. Um, And so like that, that like when things like that were happening, did that like motivate you even more to be like, I'm going to prove them wrong? Yeah, that's what my main motivator. Anything that, that happened to me, I say, okay, you believe that because I can't speak English, I don't want to pass that test. I cannot be better than you guys. And uh, that's been my motivation. That was my main motivation. Every day, go, every day, read, watching videos, articles, everything. So, what, so now that you passed the class, passed the test, got your license, you know, you've, you've, helped 40 buyers in the last year, second year in the business. What do you want to say to the teacher and the rest of those people in the classroom? They went wrong. You know, they, you went wrong, guys. Don't mm -hmm. keep people out because they can be better than you. <laughs> motivation, yeah. some motivation is the best motivation you can have. And they tell those guys, like, maybe most of them, my friends, they're not real estate. Most of the people that went with me and the course, they love the real estate. I think so. The only one that continues to do real estate is stable is me. Mm. The forty people that was next in the classroom. Mm. You're the only one that that took the class is actually still doing real estate. You mean? Yeah, I mean, I remember they passed. I passed my, I passed the, the the state test at the first time. You've been with my English, but <laughs> yeah, ninety percent of agents don't make it. They take yeah. the class, they don't pass the test. And then when they pass the test, 90% of the people that pass the test, that get their license, 90% of those people don't make it. They either sell a couple things and then quit, or they never sell anything and they quit or whatever, but they just don't make it. Um, did you know that? I know the first, the first year was the, the best year. They say in the class, you know, the arreglo agent, you know, had to wait six months to sell the first house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on average, it takes six months to get to your first deal. How long did it take you to get to your first deal? Months. 
And so you joined a team, right? Yeah, I got the team. Yeah, you joined the team. I work right now for LD Realty Group here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And what what broke is that the brokerage? What brokerage is that? Not the broker. Okay. And then, um, so you joined a team that was two years ago. It was three years ago. Yes, sir. Three years ago, and then you're still on the same team that you joined in the beginning, right? You haven't switched at all. You're still there. Yes. And you just a buyer's agent on the team. So they yes. so they funnel leads to you. Do they do they funnel the leads that are just Spanish speaking? For the most part. Yeah. No. I. I... I do both. I do Spanish speaking and English speaking, you know, slides, it's not a big deal. And then, you know, it, it's simple, simple stuff, you know, look at houses, explain the process, explain the contract, you know, get, you know, get, you know, get them more information that I can get for the agents to my buyers. Mm -hmm. So in the very beginning, agents are kind of, you know, they're scared, you know, like I could imagine this was even multiplied for you because you don't have really great English. I, well, I actually, on the record, I think you have pretty good English, but you think you don't have great English. <laughs> you think you don't have great English. So like most agents that come in, they're scared about like talking to clients and advising them on stuff and talking about the process that they don't really know a whole lot about yet because they're so new. Um... I'm sure that was kind of multiplied for you with, you know, you, you know, with the, with the language thing, like, how did you overcome that in the beginning? Um, like coming in like your first couple deals, not really, not really understanding yet the process to explain to your clients and, um, you know, stuff like, like, how did you overcome those mental, you know, barriers and, um, you know, limiting beliefs around helping people, you know, when, when you don't really know what you're doing? Uh, my team, you know, my broker, you know, uh, they've been, they've been very good to me in the sense, you know, because they have, they give me the proper training, you know, how to make phone calls, how to get approached, you know, how to talk to the agents, you know, how to talk to the buyers, you know, how to schedule, you know, uh, how to read inspection reports, how to read appraisals, things like that. They give me very solid, very solid training. And that's why I can come and be more better agent because I remember the beginning of the process, I was so scared to talk yeah. to the other agents because I feel that my, that my communication is not so good to get a contract. You know, most of the time, the first thing you have to do when you, the, when you, after, before they choose the house, you call the agent, you know, let them know, get information, how, how many offers there I am, you know, how they look like, you know, when, when they want to pick the offer, things like that. I never, I never were confident in me in the beginning. Uh, my broker, you know, most of the time, they made a phone call for me, you know, and teach me how to do it. And the, after that, I remember after four or three months, you know, I, I started to do myself. I started to communicate with the agents, you know, I tried to negotiate it, you know, I tried to ask him for press reduction, you know, um, you know, with, with the fact, you know, we asking for more, you know, some calls for my, for my buyer, things like that. Yeah. So bro, do you, I don't know if you under, you don't realize how rare it is to have, to have, to be a new agent and kind of have that hand holding, like walking you through the process, the way it sounds like that they walked you through the process. That's like extremely rare in the industry not a lot of like there's hardly anybody who like spends that much time on a new agent because because 90 percent of them fail and so what what brokerages have have like come to the conclusion of is that it's not a good roi on their time it's not a good return on their investment to like handhold yes they have programs and they do training sessions and stuff like that but there's not a lot of like hand holding through the whole process and stuff for new agents because they know 90% of them are going to fail and the 10% who make it, it's not even a good ROI to spend the time on all those agents. So you kind of like lucked up, it sounds like, into like a team that was willing to really sit down and walk you through the process and stuff. Yes, my my I know my team is great. You know, most of my broker, you know, she's amazing. She helped me with it. You know, contract. You know, that's the client. You know, like uh, 
she give you, you know, the support that we need to be successful. Yeah. She said the time, if you have some call you had to make, you had to make, call me because I want to, I want to walk into the process because in the end, you know, if we are successful, they're probably going to be successful. You know, is it broken itself for the agents itself for you know everybody wants to grow? Is that the main thing? You know, the main thing is not all about you know broker. You know, I saw you know we need a small team. We only like twelve agents over here. You know, but we not we not have like quality. We ca- uh, we know quantity. We quality. You know, yeah, and that's yeah. Our- what uh before we go any further, for anybody that wants to like send you referrals, any of the agents watching that you know needs an agent in Atlanta wants to send you referrals, where would they? send those to where's the best how, how what's the best way to get a hold of you if anybody has any referrals in in atlanta yeah but mom you can give me you know a call for the uh 470 c21 1037 i say 470 c21 pedro i work you know full time i work from Mondays to Sundays Monday to Sunday 24 hours i i i like to go in very quiet if I got if I got my panel in full, if I think closet this small, you know, I continue grinding. I never stop because most of the agents right now, they have like three closing, four closing one month and say, no, I'm good. No. Mm-hmm. If we know like that. Here's like if we want people close, if we want to help people to get a house, it's not how many close we are, you know, it's how many people we can help in the month. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'll put all your information in the description and stuff too. Do you think that being on the show has helped you at all in your real estate business or has it just been a complete wash? It's been a complete wash. Like yeah. being in the show, having helped me, you know, in my sell business because most people, you know, that watch the show, it's like, you know, they talking, you know, crap on me most of the time. <laughs> it's like having, having hit a single, a single person say, hey, you know, I want to buy it for you because most most of the people that call me from the show, they want only talk to me, you know, and made me lose most most of my time. You know, even they call me, I spend time, I work with the process, you know, I t- I, I tell them why they need to get in order to get the qualification, you know, to work with the process, and they they nah, they they always you know make comments about coming to say you know bad words on me, you know, you know, I, I, I'm telling you, I mean. I haven't had a single, you know, a single client from the show. So you've had people reach out because of the show, but then they didn't buy from you, you mean? No. Yeah, they never buy from me. They only yeah. call me, you know, to say, you know, watch match, you know, say, call me names and stuff like that. Call me user, you know, you yeah. are a green car, you know, oh, yeah. you a scammer and, you know, all, all the best stuff. Yeah. Well, um, you kind of got thrown into the social media world, like, um, you know, like, uh, like, like, like from black to white, like just complete shock, right? Because you went from basically, you know, no social media to all of a sudden, boom. And then like, there's all these haters, right? When, when I have, have come into the social media world very slowly and gradually, right? It's been like six years. I've been putting out a lot of content. And I'm, and it's just gradual. Like I've had a little hater here or there and then a little more. And then over time to where I get to where I am right now. And it's just like 50% of the comments are hate comments, you know, and 50% are, are positive. But what I've come to realize with it is that the amount of people that watch my content that don't comment, that love me, love my content, um, far, 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 far outweighs the haters. And that's what I want to say to you today, that regardless of how many haters you have, try not to stereotype the entire, you know, your entire audience, let's say, thinking that all of them think that, you know, you're a user, a green card, you know, whatever, because I guarantee you, dude, it's like me and my wife. Like, we don't think that at all about you whatsoever, Um, I wouldn't have had you come on the show and all that stuff. Like we love you. And, um, there's way more people like us that actually support you than there are haters and stuff. So just keep that in mind as you're, as you're going through life. And you kind of got, like I said, thrown into that where it's all of a sudden you're in this new world where you're getting all these people talking shit about you, you know, and it sucks. Yeah. Like it It sucks. sucks. It took a while for me to understand like 
people that hate on other people are, are just like, what is wrong? I mean, like, how do you take time out of your day, you know, to like type something mean on a, on, on a video or even call somebody and say something mean to them? Like, how, how do you have the time of the day to like put forth effort to be mean to somebody? That, that sounds something really weird about you. Mm. Oh, but anyway, well, most of the time. Huh? Mm. And most of the time now, because my because my phone number that's available for the public, you know, I got my social media. They call me. They call me. Say, hey, Pedro, it sucks. You user. Nobody want to buy house with you, man. Oh, Go back to God. your country, you know. <laughs> and then you know, and the and the I answer all the phone calls that come into my phone. I had to answer because yeah. I don't have a PlayStation client. Right. All the time, you know, those 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 are the cloud. They only call me to to call me. Hey, Pedro, you suck. Say like that. I say okay. <laughs> and, and, do you um do you do you enjoy do you do you like being here? It was it was DR right? Yeah, it was in DR. Yes. Do you do you do you love your life here more than the DR? Would you rather be there? Would well, you rather be here? That, the life the life in DR is good. You know the problem to succeed in DR is a little bit harder. You know, that life in the art school, how to use a seat in the art is hard. Here in the United States, you know, they love it. You can say seat and anything that you do, you do it right. If you that, if you put it aside, you know, and the effort, you can say seat. You can be, you know, you, you you can be whatever you want over here, bro. There is a little, it's a little, you know, harder because most people, you know, don't want you grow. They, they, they not help you. They not. Yeah. Do you go back there a bunch? I'm, right now, I haven't go back a bunch, you know. Um, I've been working this year, like, a lot. This year, I've been working 20, 24-7, and I've been, I haven't gone at all. Mm -hmm. I went just only one time and went to see my mom, you know. Yeah. So when you get, so so the process and the way that you sold 40 properties in your second year, okay, I just want to talk about that for a second. So, um, so your your team like funnels you leads, right? You take the leads, you call the leads right then, and start asking questions, qualifying them, starting to figure out what it is they're looking to do, why they're looking to do it. You know, set appointments, meet with them, show them properties. What's your process like? How do you get forty deals closed in a year where interest rates have went through the roof? Yeah, the, the process is that, um, let me tell you something. I started uh, work for this year with last year in 2021. And no, 2022. I started saying October, November, December. Go to all the lead that have been half in the year, you know, and go okay. buy by one. You see why they not couldn't buy the house. Yeah. Okay? And all those leads that couldn't buy the house the, la, that year, I tried to get the, you know, try to get the nutrition, call them, you know, hey, you look, you know, you looking, you couldn't buy house this year because um, you had to refinance your car, you know, you had to get more income, you know, you had to work more, you know, you had to put more hours on your job, you know, you need a cross signer and all those leads they got, you know, was like, I started like 10 or 12, 15, you know, they, they couldn't buy. I prepare all of them. For the next year, mm -hmm. for the dozen twenty three for this year, and the, all those lead they couldn't buy last year, I give you a call and say, "Hey, this is the time you're ready. Let's do it. Let's push it." You know, right now the market the market was shifting a little bit more for the budget side. Right now, you know, they need some costing costs. You know, they have only fifteen, seventeen, uh, you know, thousand dollars in the bank. I call the agent. I say, "Look, I got my buyer ready to go." If you can give me the costing calls, they didn't want to be closed. Yes, I negotiate. Yes, I negotiating with, with the agents, and the agents say, "Okay, let's do it. Let's get it." And they say, most, most, most of my buyers, you know, they only bring, you know, the down payment. Right. Most of my buyers is only they only had the down payment, Close, they have 50K, taken care of. 70K. They they need the closing costs taken care of. You mean? Yeah, they need the closing costs taken care of. Most of my clients say, "I negotiate it. I'm being good at that thing." Get negotiation with all the agents, and then you know, 
the all my clients, they can they they only have like the down payment. I get the cost to close more for them, and then they can close. Nice. So so in the beginning, how many, uh, like how many hours? So you took the team's like list of buyers for the last year, right? And then you yeah. and then so how many how many people were on that list? You remember? Uh, let me. How oh, now each year. I always I always bring my notebook with me with my notebook. Something for that I, that I do is like I got all my things like in, in my notebook. That for me is is magical because I got all the clients, you know, I call all of them, all of them, you know, I call it, I prepare for the next year. And that's that's the beauty. I come in here in the morning, go to my list of clients call them, see what happened, see if they need something. And they, they, they are alive. You can see they, they some kind of, a lot of clients they've been working with. And most, and most of that, you know, I get in, I get in close. So, so when you started out, you had this long list of like old leads from the team. How many hours a day were you making calls? Were you just making calls on your phone, just dialing the numbers with your finger? No, I uh, we got a CRM. So you had an auto dialer for. Yeah, yeah, I got the auto dialer. I called for a CRM most of the morning. I make phone calls, send nine in the morning to eleven. You know, after that, um, you know, I take a little break call the lead they have already looking houses, make the appointment, show them house and, and then room and after that call again in the night. Mm, wow. Okay. Um and then geez, okay. And then so that was two years ago when you started that? Uh, I started that no last last year. Okay. At the end of twenty twenty two. So, and then like that kind of like started planting the seeds of all these buyers. So a lot of your buyers this year were from that list. There were old leads that your team had. Yeah. Nice. And nobody that kind of them. Yeah. That's incredible, bro. So what's the plan from here? Like, what are your big goals in real estate? Do you, are you even thinking like five years out or past being a buyer's agent? Do you ever have ambitions to maybe be like a full blown agent where you're doing listings and sales or um something of that nature. Um right now I want from here in the future of um, I don't know. First I try to maybe next year I want to get my broker license. I want to get my broker license to be a social broker. Yeah. It's be a broker it's not it's not easy, you know, but I, I want to try. I want to try it. Or I don't know, you know, uh, I know got out of listing inside. Not yet. I know got out of, I got a listing. I got a couple, like two or three, you know. So they allow you to get like, listings list. too. Yeah, they allow me to get listing too. Okay. You know. Okay. So you're not just I a buyer. Do you're you're doing listings too. Yeah. Let me do some. This broker here is awesome because even you know that I'm the team, they let you you have your own listings. Mm. Nice. Nice. Cool. Well, bro. Um. I mean, honestly, all I can say, man, is that it's it's like overly inspirational is the only, the only words I can really kind of come up with. Like to see you come here, the way it all happened, you know, learning English, passing your test the first time, going out there and selling 40 properties, you know, over the last 12 months. Um, like 90% of people don't make it in this business. You know what I mean? It's like... It's it's overly inspirational to like see what you've done, and honestly, I can't wait to kind of see how this how this whole thing plays out for you over the next three or four or five years. Because again, right now we're in this really high interest rate environment, right? So so how are you handling yeah. those? How are you handling that situation with with buyers like today? Um, you know, with these seven and a half to eight percent rates. Like, what are some things that you're doing? How are you handling that with your clients? Right now, you know, right now, the market that we, uh, that I work in, working more for the spot in market right now, you know, this, uh, you know, Latino market right now, it's a little hard for them because in the end, they have to pay for it. If you compare rent 
to a market right now. Let's say you know the how the medium how the medium values in the how the the medium uh, the medium price range in the house is three fifty right now here in Corsalana. You know three fifty you can get three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Sometimes you can get four bedrooms. Okay, uh, we know that right now a per, um to the eight percent interest gonna be three thousand. 3,200, 3,100, you know. Most of the people running an apartment paying like 2,200 for two bedrooms apartment, let's say. Mm. And that's why I can sell the product because most of the people been with rent for a, a lot of years. Like, I got money that been renting for 10 years, 12 years, you know. Um, they couldn't buy and then we prepared them to get the houses because we put in the spectrum. You, you want to continue make reach, you know, the landlord or you want to be you all are low. Mm-hmm. That's the product there I tried to sell. And because here in Atlanta, the rent stays super high. It's skyrocketing. Skyrocketing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. What, uh, what do you, so do you do anything for fun? Do you do anything outside of work or is it just work? I know it just only work. Right I now, it's just only work. I, I want to be the best. I say I want to be the best. If, we, you want to be the best, you have to put time. Yeah. And time is right now. I, I believe that if I prepare myself for these, my first five years, I know that after that, you know, things will be more easy for me. But I want to be ready for the future. I want to be ready, you know, get the more experience, you know, get the more. That's, that's what I say. I don't care to see the person, you know, that have to help is like $200,000, you know, compared mm-hmm. to. Five hundred thousand dollar, you know. I will declare the deal like 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 a regular transaction. Just only we have to get this close because in the end, you know, I get this experience. That's where you got to be, bro. That's what. Well, it's not yeah. an experience, right? It, it's it's the person that bought the two hundred thousand dollar property. Okay, in five years they sell it for three fifty and buy something for six hundred and refer four people to you who also b- do multiple deals with you over the next three to six years, right? So it, it's a snowball. Really, when you're talking to a prospect, bro, you're really talking to about 20 to 30 prospects because that one prospect you're talking to turns into like 20, 30 deals over the next decade or over the next 15 years. So people don't realize this. Like when you're talking to a prospect, you're really trying to lock that lifelong relationship in, you know, for 20, 30, even more deals over the next 10, 20 years, you know, across your career. Because I try to help people think in terms of their career, right? Not like doing a deal today, but more so the ramifications of this prospect over the lifetime of your career. Um, which brings me to another question. What are you building your own database that's like yours? And how are you remarketing to those people to make sure they never forget who you are? Right now I try to, you know, I got my, I try to do my own database. This is Nah, it's not big because all the lead, you know, go to this, go to the CRM, but you can have like a private lead. It can be private lead. It can be, you know, like open lead. They can, everybody can see. And then right now, uh, I make myself, you know, like great, great negotiator with the, you know, for the market. I try to give you my, my, my buyers, you know, the best of me, you know, try to get a seller, you know, pay the rate. Uh... <laughs> I tried to do the, the best I could to help my, my buyers. Yeah. But are you like creating a database of your own? Are you allowed to? Can you? Are you? Yeah, you're allowed to create your database. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to create your database. You, are you, are you on that? Are you, are, you, are you focusing on growth? Because like that's going to be when you branch out and be a broker or go on your own or whatever. Like the size of your database and the amount of people that know who you are that you remarket to consistently where they never forget you. Bro, dude, I I do deals with people who I did deals with like 10 years ago. Haven't heard from them since. And then they they reach out and say, I need to do this or sell this or buy that. Happens all the time. Um, And it's because I put them in a database and I do a weekly email to the whole database every week on the same day of the week. I've been doing that for 17 years. And um, they never forget me. Do you have something in place like that? Because that's how you really build the snowball up to the point where you're doing a million a year in in commissions. Yeah, right now we uh, my my database we can got a smart uh, smart plan. Okay, 
I guess my plan for like two, uh, six months, one year, two years, you know, most of the people right now, they sell in three years, two years yeah. and a half. Yeah. And then I got my, I got my other big plan, you know, I put them in the smart plan and they continue, they get emails, they get notifications, you know, I call them if they, if they, I got information for the birthday, I call them for the birthday, say, Hey, happy birthday, it's Pedro here, you know, real estate agent, if you need something for me today. Let me know. And um, I never been very into social media. You know, I'm really scared, you know, to go social media to put myself out because all those haters, you know, they only talk crap mm -hmm. on me all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's, if you see my social media, I know me a lot of videos, how to buy houses. You know, I, I not like you, you know. I, I saw your social media. You, you inspired me, Ricky, to do videos all the time, to be out, you know, and, uh, and I love what you do. And I say, mm -hmm. Can do what we can do because in the time, and so the haters want to pay on me, and that's that's hold me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I I get it. That's what holds a lot of people back. They're like, I don't want all those hate comments and stuff. So I totally get it, man, dude. It was uh, it was cool hanging out with you for a bit, man. I appreciate you coming on and sharing because um, a lot of people are gonna get some inspiration out of this. Like people that watch this that aren't even gonna comment. They're not even com going to comment that, Pedro, you suck. They're just going to watch it, and they're going to be like, damn, if Pedro can do it, you know, there's no doubt I can go out there and do it, and it's going to inspire a lot of people. So thank you from them to you. Thank you from me to you. And I'll thank, you. Let me say thank you for having Thank you for having me on the show. Thanks so much for giving me the opportunity. You know, all the kings, you know, can talk about my spring of real estate, you know, and the thing for most, you know, for giving me the invitation. I appreciate a lot, you know. You the you you've been one of those people, you know, it's a lot of real estate agents and it's a lot of it's a lot of real estate in the market, but you have been the one, you know, that have called me reach out, you know, to spoke about my experience, you know, and I love that. Thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to be here with you. Yeah, man. And I enjoyed hearing more about, you know, how it's went for you. And dude, I'm gonna keep following reach out to me anytime, man, with, with anything, any questions, anything I can do to help. And I'm going to bring you back on and next year or something like that. We'll see where you're at. Okay. Thanks so much for everything, Ricky. Hey, I appreciate you.